Yo, what's going on, guys? Procrastinating's a hell of a drug. I, I gotta do some work, but I saw that the Knicks, of course, ladies and gentlemen, are, are, are looking still to find a backup center. Yes. The report that we're hearing from Ian Begley of SNY Sports New York is Mr. New York Knicks. I don't know why I called them Mr., but the New York Knicks are still looking for a third string center. Supposedly, they had reached out to Omer year to seven and Bruno Fernando year to seven went back overseas as well as Bruno Fernando signed with the Toronto Raptors. Allegedly, they had reached out to the Utah Jazz about Walker Kessler and the Jazz hit him up with an asking price of two first round picks. I think they obviously were like, we're good on that. Now, with that being said, the new report is that they would like to bring somebody in. And why wouldn't they? I think this is a team that would benefit a lot by bringing in a guy like... Mm, I mean, they're, I don't know who would be perfect. I think them bringing back Precious Achua was smart. And if we look at the current roster, let me just show you guys what that roster looks like. It should be on the screen right now. So, Mitch, Precious, and Jericho Sims... Am I wrong, Knicks fans? Tell me, is it? It seems like you guys are completely fine with moving on from Jericho Sims. Seemingly, he didn't become the guy that you guys were hoping that he would become. And I, I understand the the whole idea of, all right, we're done with this guy. Let's just get him out of here because it didn't work. So, but for me, the question I have is when you look at this roster. Ariel Huckaporty, I don't know why we have him listed as a power forward, but he is the fourth string center. And I really do think he could be the guy to surprise people. But like I said, Jericho Sims was somebody I thought that they were really high on. And somebody that his rookie season, he was playing minutes. I mean, he's only 25. This past season, he went down in minutes. I just want to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think of Jericho? Or is that just like a wasted effort? Either way, let's just go ahead and talk about it. So the Knicks are, sir, hit that like and subscribe button. And before you do that, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Who do you think the Knicks should go after at the center position? And yeah, let's get right to it. So the Knicks search for a center or a reserve center to be behind Mitchell Robinson and to compete with Precious Achua, Jericho Sims, and Ariel Huckaporty is ongoing as they aim to add size and depth to the roster. We know that they extended offers to Bruno Fernando and Omar Yeta 7. As they clearly are trying to bring in a guy who has some rebounding and shot blocking potential. Now, if we look at the free agency market, and according to my work, Hoops Hype, the remaining free agents are here. These are the ones that you guys want to hear that are, are worth their time. First off, I think the, the most realistic guy that actually could provide some value for them is based back Biombo. he played with the oklahoma city thunder and the memphis grizzlies last year he's a shot blocking specialist rebounding presence that gives you rim protection even though his offensive game is limited to just being a lob threat and a putback guy he averaged four and a half points five rebounds about an assist a night last year shooting 40 56 percent from the field and 48 percent from the free throw line and he's a guy who's already made a bunch of money. So I think at this point, he just wants to go to a team where he can just provide a role. And Bismack, I personally believe, is very capable of providing said role for it, for a team like the Knicks, who this, this season, he played 23 minutes a night with the Grizzlies, and he put up five and six. And then with the Thunder in, ten, in seven minutes a night through 10 games, he put up two rebounds, two points. And with the Suns the year before in two seasons and 14 minutes a night, he was a guy who was averaging five and five. And he's only 32, so you got nothing to lose. I really do think Mac is great. Now, the other guys are obviously Boban Marjanovic, who I know a lot of people just think is like a marketing tool as he's known for his enormous size and his likable personality. Marjanovic has found success in the league despite an era that emphasizes floor spacing and switchability, areas that he obviously struggles in. But his finishing ability, size, and pay protection allow him to have an impact in limited minutes. Yeah, he only averaged three points and two and a half rebounds while shooting 53% from the field. Still, 
gives you size. Then obviously Harry Giles, who had made a comeback last year in the NBA, who he was once, you know, obviously when he was college, people thought he was going to be a star, but injuries hampered that expectations. But he still has some athleticism. Last year, yeah, he barely played two, two points, two rebounds. But he's obviously a guy who's wanting to find whatever opportunity there is. And I really do think he fits what the Knicks need. Now, the last, I guess, older guy that we'll mention JaVale McGee. I think JaVale McGee's gone. Don't even, not even worth it. But his shot blocking and rim running are things that maybe could be useful. He also brings a bunch of knowledge. He averaged four points and three rebounds last year, shot 59% from the field, but he just does not look like super springy. So the other, those are, I think, the, the, the best remaining guys. The other ones that you could maybe look at, Christian Koloku is a guy, supposedly the whole blood clot thing has been fixed. Oh, so sorry, I just hit the microphone. The whole, the whole blood clot thing has been fixed, and he was a guy who showed some promise on both ends of the floor and shot blocking. There's Charles B. Diaco from Alabama. He spent last year with the Spurs. He's a defense specialist, rebounding rim protector. There's Alex Sar's older brother who popped his Achilles last year when he was on a two-way with the Thunder. Olivier Sar, who was kind of a two-way floor spacing big. There's obviously Robin Lopez, who's got an incredible hook shot and can bring some toughness and leadership. There's Malik Williams, who's just kind of a defensive rebounding guy, he was with the Raptors last year. He actually replaced Koloku. Nathan Knight's a guy from William & Mary who's you know, a big man who can stretch the floor, provide some energy off the bench. And then Chenzi Metu, who's kind of a high energy forward center who can play in transition and be a shot blocker. But obviously it's all up to Leon Rose, who's expected to continue to search for an impactful center to be a reserve. Now the team is looking to maintain its defensive idea identity while they want to support the, you know, Jalen Brunson. And while there's several free agents still in the market, the Knicks have the options to choose from whoever they feel like is going to be good. They also could wait to see who gets cut during training camp. I think the loss of Isaiah Arnstein obviously is going to be a significant gap in the team's rebounding and interior defense and screen and offensive production in terms of how they use their bigs. But I think th they'll find somebody. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think of this? And yeah, I think it's going to be interesting, especially like I said, right here when you look i think ariel huckaporty is a guy that i think could surprise a lot of people but it all comes down to do the knicks really want to go about this okay and i want to hear i want to hear you guys opinions what would you guys think and like and subscribe i'm sure i'm coming i don't know i think that's it are we at eight minutes yeah, bye.